Jack Andrake is here along with his mom, Jane. Good morning to you. It is still, Jack, one of the best reactions I've ever seen. I love that unbridled joy. You became interested because a close family friend died of pancreatic cancer. So what exactly were you looking for? Yeah, so essentially how I started this journey is I just went to Google and Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and what I found is that 85% of all of these cancers are diagnosed late, when someone has less than a 2% chance of survival, and our current test costs $800 at 60 years old, and it misses 30% of all cancers, so I thought, maybe I can change this. And I Why just, did you think that? Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was a bit of an optimist. I mean, armed with ninth grade biology, I decided to set out on this journey. However, I thought I could do it just because the current test was just so bad, but also, Teenagers, we're at this epitome of creativity where we can dream up wild ideas, but we have enough knowledge to make our ideas a reality. Yeah. Jack, you make an interesting point that this is not just about intelligence, because intelligence, you think you're not the smartest kid in your class, right? What's no. This? Yeah. Yeah, because one thing is that now we have access to so much information, so you can be so, so smart. You can be a genius and know so much knowledge, but if you don't know how you use that, if you don't have the creativity, then you're just as good as my smartphone. Yeah. Well, yes. I think persistence yes. is really the story. And yeah. right, Jane, I mean, Jack was repeatedly told by scientists who, you know, submitted this to, they weren't interested and didn't think it was work, and yet he persisted. Why? He had to persist because even his parents thought that this was too much. <laughs> you know, he was 14. Yes. And I go, dude, like, you're not going to get a lab. You're 14. <laughs> right, dude. Something dude. easier. Yeah. But he was always very persistent and yeah. stubborn and really believed in his idea. And why why did you not give up after all those rejections? You finally got one. Why did you? Well, because it's I more than persistence. Profession. Yeah, because what happened is that because of that close family friend, but also a hundred people die of pancreatic cancer every single day, and so every day I would go into a lab. I'd think, how am I going to help save a hundred okay, lives today? Let me understand this. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have all of these scientists. You're not the first person to talk, think about pancreatic cancer. I think Steve Jobs died from pancreatic cancer, didn't he? Yeah. And and he had a great saying, which is, you got to think like a beginner. You know, you can't be encumbered by what you know and think. Uh, yeah. Is that part of it, you think? Because all these smart scientists who spent a lifetime, they thought of it in an unoriginal way, and you, because you didn't know all that, thought of it in an original way. Yeah, because as you get deeper and deeper into a field, what happens is you get encumbered by all this knowledge, yeah, exactly. and like you get sat in this one You don't mindset. see the obvious. Yeah, and so looking at it in a different way, so like maybe someone who doesn't know anything might think, well, maybe this is Let me try it. Come on, and, this. and what about him as a kid? Because people think he's an Alice, a whiz kid. Are you thinking? Advice to guide him is what? Yeah, you know, just from the beginning, whenever he would ask questions, I would say, well, let's figure out how to ask those questions. So to teach him from a very early age how to find the answers himself. But he's still a typical kid in your mind. You know, even though he's done amazing things, he's still 16, and he still needs his mom and dad to help him out. <laughs> yeah, Jane and Jack Andreka, thank you. And if people want to know more about parenting a gifty, gifted child that's on 60 Minutes Overtime, it's a great thing about, a good about raising gifted children. Thank you.